Welcome everybody to other tone, 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 tone. <laughs> we are obviously on this dais with, uh, well, I am with some the incredible legends here. <laughs> And here in Virginia, which is your festival, and maybe you should tell people why you created this festival okay. here in your hometown. The festival came about because uh, the city wanted to do something interesting. Um, and, and you know what, let me clarify something. Some people say, oh, you know, Beach Week was such a horrible thing, and be super clear, the black people, the black uh, students would come down here and, and cause trouble. The black students did not come down here and cause trouble. That's right. Um, That's right. I want to be very, very clear. Those students were taking a much needed and well-deserved vacation from studying, not being in the streets, mm -hmm. not wrong with the streets, because the streets made us, but I'm just being very clear. They came from another S word, school, OK? And while I feel like there were issues when there's nothing to do, when there's not much to do, and there's not a lot of planning, there's not a lot of organization, um, things are gonna happen. And it's not always people from out of town. Sometimes it could be us. You know, we've seen this thing happen before, but instead of pointing fingers, we still want the HBCUs to come here because we have, we have one here. We still want them to be here. And you know what? Believe it or not, the city did too, and that was our conversation. If we feel like there's not much to do, let's create something to do. Mm -hmm. Let's make it about Virginia. Let's make it about the place where everybody is coming to and invite even more people. So they understand that like, when this guy came down here, he discovered that there was something in the water, right? He discovered that. So let us share that with these people. And it's not just music. It's business. It's the community. It's the community leaders. It's the religious leaders. It is the opportunity, it is ambition, it's aspiration, it's inspiration. So let us figure out a way, what is the best structure? What, what is the construct that we could offer, not only our community, but the rest of the world, um, something to do? We figured a, a festival would be the way to do it. And music happens to be the thread that connects it all. That's right. And now the world is going to see Virginia for the very first time in a big way. So that's why we're doing it. I think you guys got blessed twice growing up here with, all, with each other because you all got blessed with this like musical talent. But then what was really crazy to me was that you all had this musical talent to challenge each other to make yourselves even better. And then the fact that you guys all grew up so close together, like it blows my mind that that happened. And is there that much talent in Virginia that like yes. percentage wise? Yes. Like, <laughs> There is that much talent, and, I, and I'm going to shut up now, but I just want to say, as much as there was like the talent, there were always like the connectors, the guys that knew different people. And one of those guys for us was, was, was our brother Cam. Like Cam, <laughs> Cam. Knew, Cam knew us, and he knew Tim. He had the car, we didn't. We were always bumming rides. But like <laughs> having him take us out there to Bridal Creek over to Tim's house, that's how I met Tim. Mm. You know, so you, wow. you, to me, it's like not just the talent, it's like also like the connectors Sail too. High. You know, those are, the, those are the guys that like, Sail. those are the guys that put us all together. It's, it's different for me personally because I'm like, I'm probably five years younger than everybody. And my brother actually was in a group with Tim in middle school. <laughs> and, and, and for, so my brother could go over his house and you know, so they could rap Tim with DJ, he had to take me. So, I mean, that's how young, let's just, you know, what's that? If, if 13, 14, I'm, I'm eight, my mom wouldn't, wouldn't let him go without me. So I would like go over there, they're like DJing and rapping or whatever the case may be. I'm like dancing. Tim dad would like kick us out. Yes, 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 <laughs> like, yes, 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 yes. And, and you know, you're right, like proximity, like everybody was just, all within two miles. Definitely two miles each way, I would say. It's true. You're right. Yeah, Tim making that music. <laughs> Tim, Tim making that music up in his room. Out, man. 
<laughs> and his dad would definitely kick us out at a certain point. Like so Tim, who doing all that stomping? Go. Yeah, <laughs> you get out. <laughs> and like, and what you guys don't understand is like, th there was only a couple of guys that like you would want to get like mixtapes from. That was Scientific, and that was DJ Timmy Tim. And Tim, you don't understand was the illest DJ, DJ ever, ever, <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever. No. Him on the yes. ones and twos, amazing. <laughs> I was cool. I was cool. <laughs> I, I'm just curious if like there's a record that either of you have produced to where you heard it and you were like, oh, I wish I did that one. Okay, I got it, I got it. And I wanna say not that I produce, but let me tell you this story. Pharrell had a studio called Master Sound. It was another studio connected to Master Sound. And me and Missy was working in the, I guess I would call it Studio A, and then they had a Studio B. Yep. And I walked to the back door, Miss was in there doing something, and I heard, I hate you so much right now. And I said, uh -huh. what is that? <laughs> and I said, Missy, you got to hear this. And I was like, oh, man, I wish I had made that beat. <laughs> that was the beat. And I, I didn't make it, but for real, man, I was like, oh, this is crazy. <laughs> And I just, I just, just kept listening to the door. She's like, come on, come on. We got to finish our spreck. And I said, I, I'm no, done for the night. That's what I meant. I'm done for the night. Is, no, 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 dude. No. See, no. See, stay in the rain. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, with the back, I mean. No, 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 no. <laughs> Have y'all heard Khalees? <laughs> Have you heard about Khalees? First of all, she had the big, he made the biggest anthems with her. Like, I hate you so much. Then he killed me, and I was driving in the car. Milkshake. I was in New York. Yeah, you know it. I was in New York. <laughs> I told the taxi, pull over, pull over, pull over. I said, cut that up. And it said, my milk, take brains out of the boy city. I said, oh my God. <laughs> Do you hear this? And no, no, you know. Jigga man, trigger man, hit your man no. Okay, <laughs> see we can go oh back and forth all day. So then I go to a club. See, we go back and forth. <laughs> this is, this is, so then I, we go to a club in, in Virginia. Yeah. I said, this boy. Here's another one. Here's another club. Danger! Watch yourself! And I was like, oh man, this dude is bringing back James Brown. <laughs> like in a new way. And like Pharrell Beats was so unorthodox to me. We used to ask each other the same question like, how, how, what you do, what you do? And it's like, we are, but I was more amazed at his production while he was amazed at mine. Bro. I was chasing him, Bro. he might was looking at me. So it was, like you said, That's what some, I'm saying. It's something in the water. Jump. Yeah. A reflection of yourself. Come on. Everything was inspired by this man right here. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> you know I. Okay. I'm a hustler, baby. I just want you to know. <laughs> hey, where I been? Come on, that's a, these are classic songs. They still play today. From that, because we were all different, that's why we family to the day. Yeah. It's like we, we are musical. Yeah. It's really interesting, you guys all have your own lanes, and the only similarity is how successful it's been. Yeah, but with our first measure of like continued success started with this guy right here. You know? <laughs> yeah. The guy that brought Michael Jackson to like Bingo! <laughs> yeah. to the state of Virginia. Like, yes. Michael you know, Jackson, Ferraris, like, all the best cars, yeah, everything. Yeah, we yeah, were riding behind the bike. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Dougie Fresh and like, and Slick Rick, the show. Like, this guy did the show. Like, the show. That's right, you did I the can't show. even believe Yo, he did the show. Break. I learned That's that awesome. from doing the research right now. It blew my mind the show. that no, you did the bro, show. Bro, it takes two, you guys. It takes two to make a thing go right. I mean, a record that lasted for like 10 years. <laughs> like, that's this guy. That's just like one of the many records that he's done. But Guy, Blackstreet, I mean, Guy, he did in New York. He did some of Guy down here, but then he did Blackstreet down here. Like, we watched him create a group down here. We watched him have people audition for that group. It was there. 
I was there. You were. Tammy Lucas. I mean, yeah. I mean, Keith Sweat. Like records that like you still play right now at every barbecue. This guy's the playlist. Like his records still go hard. Super hard. Like super hard. Like dumb hard. Yes. <laughs> it's the reason why we try to work with. We, we enjoy working with different kinds of artists now is because we watch this man do it, just like across the board. See, a lot of people don't know that I started in hip hop first. I didn't know anything about doing R&B until Keith Sweat came to me and said, yeah, I need you to work on my album. I said, man, I don't do no R&B. He said, man, if all you have to do is apply some of those chords that you do in church and them are hip hop beats. And at that time I did a, B Facts, WAP Dance. I did the show, Raps New Generation. Um, I go to work. I work, Big Daddy Kane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoonie, yeah, yeah. Spoonie yeah. Rap, um, Rob Bass, Kumo D. Yes. Go see the doctor, and all of these records I've done <laughs> that have uh, just everything made me who I am today in hip hop. Yes. But in R&B. You know, when I started that, you know, through Keith Sweat, it just took a toll on me. I kind of forgot about hip hop. Hip hop. <laughs> until Rex and the Fat. Rex and Which, the Fat. Which, yeah. yes. Yeah. Pharrell. Yes. Yeah. You know, when I first took a liking to the Neptunes, I knew that there was something. And I knew that they were so far ahead of their time. It's like they were on Mars. <laughs> because the music that they were doing, and the chords that Chad was playing and all the things, it was like, wow. It was almost like when Michael Jackson told me, the chords that I'm playing on Remember the Time, he's never heard in any of his songs, of any of his music. It's like the chords he's playing, I never heard in any of my songs. And all the things that I play, his progressions are different in mine are. I was just trying to play like Stevie Wonder chords. Yeah. You know, trying to be like Stevie. You did Listen, a damn good job. It, <laughs> every, every, every musician and keyboard player have different progressions. But if you play in church, you have somewhat the same progressions. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was his chords that I was like, wow. And he plays so different. It's like, it's his expression. I don't see Stevie. I see just you. I see you creating your own sound. Mm -hmm. And I think that the reason why they say New Jack Swing is mine and I'm, I created it. You I did. think everybody here created a sound. You just didn't name it. Yeah. You just didn't name it. You have a sound. You got to name it. Now, how you say trademark it, that's how you trademark it. Give your sound a name so that you can have a genre yourself. Mm. So. Anything can happen, you know. It's if we fight for it. Yep. That's what this is for. You know, I'm so happy that Pharrell and all of us are contributing to this because um, this is what we wanted to do a long time ago, you know, when they had college just come here back in 1984, 85. The skinheads, you know, kind of ran us off the block. Then we came back even stronger when I came here. I came here with some hustling friends. I don't know if you guys ever seen the movie uh, Paid in Full. Yeah. Well, I went to school with the guys that the movie was about. AZ, Alpo, Rich Porter, we're in the same class. And I grew up with those guys. And we came to Virginia to go to Bush Gardens, the Water Park, and King's Dominion. That was our thing every year. We can bring some girls. We had some fun, all hustlers. And that's what we did every year until that happened. And we just said, you know, I said to myself, to my girlfriend at the time, who's my fiance, the mother of my daughter, Donna. I said, um, if I ever move anywhere, I, won't, I wanna move here. She's like, why? I said, because it's between my mother, who's in South Carolina, in New York, so I can go back and forth. And it worked. Crazy. We would take our 
Ferraris or NSXs and <laughs> trail to New York. <laughs> back to back. Get pulled over, back to back, come right back, make the trip to the South. And that was our thing. We went to North Carolina for the bike show. We just have fun. And that's what Virginia was about for me. And I wanted to be where the fun was. But I didn't want to go too far. So Virginia was that place where I developed something and I wanted to do more, but it was these two police people, um, the women, they kept pulling us over as soon as we pull out the studio. So we just finally said, you know, why y'all keep pulling us over? So we want to know what y'all doing. It's like, we ain't doing nothing but making music. Why don't you guys come in? We're going to bring these women in here, and we're going to ask, really do they want? What do they really want with us? And it was like, well, you don't do nothing for the city. You stay to yourself. You have your studio here. I said, well, we would love to do something, but we don't know anybody. It's like, we want to we wanna do talent shows. Can we do some at this school right here? They were like, yes, we'll introduce you to the principal. Once they did that, that's how we got in. And that's how we got to meet the Neptunes. Chad, Fuel, Che, yeah. Mike, Mike yeah. Gordon, yeah. Mm -hmm. and all the guys from the school. Yeah, that's amazing. To me, this here is the new millennium, Jack the Rapper, BRE, Music Impact. Those were the conventions and conferences back then. And Pharrell is the new Jack. We, 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 we. That's us. Oh, no, 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 seriously. But I keep saying no. it because I, I like, if you notice, like, there's no Pharrell Williams here, no nothing. It's literally, it's literally us and we. And that's the only way that I can feel comfortable about it because, you know, we can have the vision and we can have the ability to galvanize, but if the community doesn't want it, then there is nothing. So, like, the fact that the community is showing up so hard. I got to say we and I got to say us, you know. And you helped me start that. If anybody can own anything up here, it's you. The rest of us, like, we just, we just, we just, we're students, man. We're, thank we're, you. We're students, That's all we man. can say is thank you. But it takes the students to pick up the torch. <laughs> Doesn't it? I know you old heads and you have some, we have some old heads in here, too. It takes the student to pick up the torch. Because yes, sometimes the teacher have to sit back and say, okay, I got to sit back and let the youngins do the thing. And let me support. That's why I'm here.